Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Ranger Jake and this is our next part in our virtual museum tour here at Kennesaw Mountain National Battlefield Park. As always, I am standing in our wonderful museum here and this is, I'm currently standing in our artillery section. As you can see behind me, we have one of our standard reader boards to give you a little bit more in-depth historic information on certain topics of the war and art artillery. And most notably behind me is a full-size authentic Civil War era cannon, okay, or artillery piece, complete with carriage and all the accoutrements that go with it. Now, as with most of the topics of this museum tour that we've been doing, there is a lot to be said about artillery of the Civil War and even artillery of the Atlanta campaign. Whole books have been written on artillery of the Atlanta campaign. So I'm gonna try and hit the broad topics and as always, if you would like more information, you can always come into the Visitor Center, check out the museum for yourself, or track down one of the Rangers or volunteers and we'd be happy to answer any questions or go into more detail for you. So first of all, we'll kind of do broad topics and then I'm gonna zoom in and talk about why this piece is very special to us here at Kennesaw Mountain. So big picture, during the Atlanta campaign, uh, you're using, both sides are using artillery, uh, heavily utilizing artillery throughout the entire campaign. And that type of artillery that are utilizing can be broken down into two main categories with some variations in each one. The two main categories are going to be referring to the inside of the cannon or the bore. There are smooth bore cannons, which this one is, and there are rifled cannons. Okay. Now, smooth bore, again, it refers to the inside of the cannon. Smooth bore is, as it sounds, smooth on the inside. Most of the smooth bore guns are going to be made of bronze, as this one is here, which is why this cannon has a green patina, because it is made of bronze and it is aged. Okay, it's over 160 years old. Rifled cannons are going to be usually made of iron and are going to have ridges that form a spiral pattern that go all the way back into the bore. The purpose of rifling in any gun, be it cannon or musket or rifle or whatever, is to spin the projectile that goes out of it. Now, there is a big difference in how these two pieces operate. One of the main things is range. So rifled cannons typically have a longer range because they're able to spin that projectile. Because they have a longer range, they're typically used more for precision or for even sieges. Sherman's Union armies heavily utilized rifled cannons. Okay? The typical Parrot gun or three inch ordnance rifle that was seen on the field had a range of roughly, maximum effective range of roughly three miles. During the Siege of Atlanta, he had 20 pound Parrot guns that had a rough range of five miles. Now, that sounds awesome. Why wouldn't you use rifled guns all the time? Well, number one, iron was a little more expensive. So the South, for example, didn't have as much access to it. Number two, there was not sophisticated sighting technology back then in the 1800s. So line of sight, three miles is awesome. Five miles is even better if you can see what you're hitting. So for a lot of the tactics of the Civil War, as you may, you may or may not know, a lot of the tactics involved heavy infantry charges. Okay, in that case, using a bronze gun with a shorter range but more explosive projectile was just as good and sometimes better. Okay, bronze, bronze guns have a maximum effective range of about roughly a mile. A lot shorter, but again, could be just as effective at, f at close range. In fact, some of the bronze guns would, could be loaded with something called canister, which is a really nasty tin can full of lead balls. Okay, and it was kind of like a shotgun round, maybe a, a range of 100 or 200 yards, but a spread of 100 feet. Okay, so it was really nasty stuff. Now, uh, I have a few artifacts to show you the difference between the projectile coming out of smooth bore and rifle. Behind me, the cannon behind me is a 12 pound smooth bore, Napoleon, and 12 pound refers to the size of the projectile. What I have in my hand here is a large iron ball, solid shot. This is, in fact, 12 pounds. This is one of the more common projectiles to come out of cannons like this one. Very useful for knocking holes in things or skipping along the ground through infantry. Again, this is a solid sphere, round, heavy iron ball. Now, coming out of the rifled cannons. Again, remember the rifled cannons are going to be shooting a longer range and with more precision. So the projectile have to look a little bit different, more aerodynamic. So to get that spin, what I have in my hand here is called a Hotchkiss shell. It is black, 
conical, also made of iron, but there's a big key difference. As I mentioned, the other projectile was solid. This one has got a hollow inside. I can screw the top off like this, and what they would do for this particular type of round shell, they would fill it with powder and a fuse. The fuse could be cut and to uh, time it. They could uh, either make an impact fuse so that it would explode upon hitting the ground, or they could cut that fuse and time it to explode in the air, shooting shrapnel and pieces, bits and pieces of the shell all over the place, causing that kind of damage. So really, you had to figure out what job you wanted to get done, what you were trying to accomplish, and that told you what cannon to use and what projectile to use. And also, as I mentioned before, materials and access to materials sometimes dictated that. So the South did not have access to the iron to the uh, to the iron that the Union had, so they did not always have as many rifled guns as the Union might have had during the Atlanta campaign. Now, to wrap up our talk, I do want to take a brief note and talk about why this cannon has made it to our MVP section of the museum, so to speak. It is because the cannons of the Civil War, if you've been to Kennesaw Mountain, you will see cannons all over the place, okay? And we have traced 95% of those cannons back to being original artifacts of the American Civil War. However, knowing where they came from and which battles they were in is very, very difficult to prove. The records for most of these artillery pieces were lost or otherwise not found after the Civil War. So the best that we could do is get these same types of cannons that would have been at this battle and put them in places that they would have been. For example, at our 24-gun battery, we have a mix of bronze Napoleons like this one and black ordnance rifles because the Union would have used, it was a mixed battery, they would have used those types of cannons there. That being said, we have traced back with 100% certainty one particular cannon that we can trace back to this battle and other battles of the Atlanta campaign, and that is this cannon behind me. And we're very proud, and this is a very, uh, very strong sense of pride for us to have this here and because of the researchers and former historians here we're able to figure that out and we did it through the use of a picture now i'm going to point to a picture right here uh, that's in the museum and i'm going to have a close-up of that with an audio description at the end of the program to give you a better idea of it but this picture shows a uh, taken over confederate artillery position after the battle of atlanta this picture was taken october in 1864 by wartime photographer and engineer George Barnard. And it shows the muzzle of a cannon facing the camera, okay? Now what our historians did many years ago was they had an idea, they enhanced the picture and on the muzzle of that cannon in the picture they noticed markings. Those were serial numbers and a maker's mark, okay? And they did some digging, did a little bit of research and they found that cannon with the same markings at a nearby park, specifically Chattanooga Chickamauga Battlefield. And because we know that this cannon was part of the Union defense of Atlanta once they moved into Atlanta, we have strong, strong certainty that this cannon was at other battles of the Atlanta campaign, including this one. So when you do come into the museum, you can look at the muzzle markings on the cannon in the picture and match them up with the muzzle markings that you see here. So they say a picture's worth a thousand words, and here at least, it's worth at least one cannon. So that concludes our kind of brief talk today on artillery, the Civil War, the Atlanta campaign, and our special buddy here. Again, look for the audio description of the picture and a close-up after the program. We hope you enjoy and we hope you stick around for more of our virtual museum tours. Thank you very much for attending. We'll see you later. This picture shows a war-torn and ravaged Atlanta after the battle and siege of Atlanta in 1864. In the distance, you see white tents that indicate the Union soldiers camp, whereas the foreground of the picture shows earthworks. These were former Confederate captured earthworks and is now being used by the Union. In the center of the picture is a cannon muzzle facing the camera. The numbers and letters that indicate the serial number and maker's mark are just visible on the muzzle. We thank you for attending yet another virtual museum tour of Kennesaw Mountain National Battlefield Park. We invite you to stay for more online content or to come to the park and see it for yourself. Thank you very much for attending.